Now what I want to try to convince you is that the internal energy of a gas depends only on the, of an ideal gas, depends only on the temperature and doesn't depend on volume. Let's see if we can uh, show that. And this is the argument that Ball uses in the textbook and it's, you know, sort of a good argument. For a gas, the, we said that the internal energy, and we'll talk more about this later in the course, the internal energy is a function in general of volume and temperature. If that's the case, then we can write the differential du as how u changes with volume at constant temperature times dv plus how u changes with temperature at constant volume times dt. Let's uh, consider the following expansion of an ideal gas. So here we have a container here we have a partition and the container is insulated so that there's no heat. So this is all insulation here. So there's no heat that could be transferred to or from the surroundings. So what this means is that Q is equal to zero because this is insulated. So another way to say this is that the process that we're going to set up for this is an adiabatic, adiabatic process. All right, and over here we have some gas at some pressure, and over here we have a vacuum, and this is an ideal gas in here. What we're going to do is to move this container here, or sorry, not the container, move this partition, which partitions between the gas and the vacuum, so that at the end of the process, we've essentially moved it all the way down to this end, so we just have gas here. And again, it's an insulated container, so we have no heat being transferred to or from the surroundings. Let's start with the first law of thermodynamics, differential form du is equal to dq plus dw. We said that the process is adiabatic so that dq in this case is equal to zero. And this is a PV work that it's doing, so PV, PV, let's try, I try like PDV. I claim that's equal to zero. Why is that? Well, the gas is expanding against a pressure of zero. It's a vacuum here. So PDV, which is what the work is equal to, the pressure is zero. So even though the volume changes, it's changing against an external pressure of zero. So that is zero. So this adiabatic expansion of an ideal gas into a vacuum, this means that du is equal to zero. There's no change in the internal energy of the gas as it expands adiabatically into a vacuum. The internal energy does not change. So we know that. So we know that du is equal to zero and we also know that du is how u changes with volume at constant temperature times the change in volume plus how u changes with temperature at constant volume times the temperature change. Now, if the sum of these two has to equal zero, then, unless the very unlikely chance that that is equal to the negative of that, this implies that this term has to equal zero. For the sum of two terms has to equal zero, this term has to equal that term. And there's no reason to suppose that one would be the negative of the other. They're independent volume and temperature, so each term has to be equal to zero. Now, this means that dv, in this case, the volume change is not equal to zero. Why? Well, look, you're changing the volume of the gas as you expand against it. This implies that the second term, so that's equal to, uh, not equal to zero, that implies that this term has to equal zero. So how u changes with volume at constant temperature has to equal zero. Now we said that this term also has to equal zero. We know that dt, or the temperature, we know that dt is equal to zero. Why is that? Uh, if we go back here, we said that the internal energy of an ideal gas, oh, one more here, <laughs> here we go, uh, the internal energy of an ideal gas depends only on temperature. So if the internal energy does not change, then the temperature does not change. So that means for an ideal gas, if the internal energy does not change, therefore the temperature does not change. This implies that, well, it uh, doesn't have to be equal to zero. All right, but this is a key finding here. 
Oh, what have I done? Oh, shoot. Clearly, I've made a mistake. That term has to equal zero. So this implies that u does not depend on volume. So u does not depend on volume, just depends on temperature. u is a function, this in fact is just a function of volume, uh, sorry, of temperature for an ideal gas. So the internal energy of an ideal gas just depends on temperature. For real gases, we'll find in um, another, the next section of this lecture, that it depends not only on temperature, but also on volume. But for an ideal gas, there it is, does not depend on volume. And that's an interesting finding. So I hope it convinced you that uh, the internal energy of an ideal gas depends only on temperature and not on volume. And that sort of makes sense from the ideal gas model, the kinetic molecular theory. I'll go back here. Um, so yeah, it doesn't depend on volume. You're just moving this back and forth. And the only way that these molecules of gas have any energy is their kinetic energy, which depends upon temperature. And that's kind of neat. Oh, I guess we already covered that, and we covered that adiabatic expansion of vacuum, a gas into a vacuum. So we showed that considering that we have the internal energy, how that depends on volume is zero. In other words, it doesn't depend on volume. All right, so that's the end of the first part of lecture four. Hope you had a great time listening to it.